This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at the new features in Premiere Pro and Audition, the 2014 release for the Creative Cloud. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to use the new Masking and Tracking feature. This is the new version, and you'll notice that the interface has not changed particularly. It's all under the hood. And what you're looking at here, I hate to say because I know there are sensitive members in the audience, but this is a very desperate felon. Yes, a desperado anxious to escape captivity. And we can see that. We just play the sequence. Look at that high-speed escape. <laughs> anyway, because they are only alleged to be a, a miscreant and not convicted by their mother of being a miscreant, we need to hide their identity. And this allows me to showcase a really cool new feature. I'm going to go over to the Effects tab. I'm going to do a search for Mosaic. Now, this can be done with any effect inside Premiere, with the exception of Warp Stabilizer. You can also not do this for effects controls effects, such as motion, opacity, or time remapping. So if we rule out effects controlled native effects and we rule out Warp Stabilizer, this can be done anywhere else. It allows us to have an effect. I'm going to drag Mosaic on here. I don't want the mosaic effect to apply to the entire clip. I want it to apply to only a portion of a clip and that's where these two new icons come in. I can click the rectangle and create a rectangular mask or I can click the ellipse and have an elliptical mask. Notice that by now I've clicked two different masks. I don't want the rectangle so I'm going to highlight the mask itself, hit the delete key and that rectangular mask is gone. If you decide you don't want the ellipse either, highlight the name of the mask and press the delete key, and now that masking is gone. Well, we still have the challenge of hiding the identity of our miscreant here, so I'm going to click the ellipse. These parameters allow us to change the mask. Mask Feather allows us to soften the edges. We'll soften it just a bit to show that we can. You can see it's softening on the inside as you look closely. We can adjust the opacity of the mask. I'm going to set this to 100%. We can also expand the mask, make it bigger or smaller relative to the ellipse itself. I'm going to leave that set to zero. And I'm going to set the mask feather to 10% because I don't need to have it be a soft edge for what we're doing. You can change the size of the mask by grabbing one of the four control dots. And I found it easiest when I'm trying to hide somebody's face to click the inverted checkbox. This masks sort of well, you see what it does. Flips everything around, makes it a whole lot easier to isolate on the area that you're trying to adjust, and we'll position it so it's reasonably close to the girl's face, and then uncheck inverted again. And ta-da! We have a masked miscreant. I want to increase the number of blocks. We'll set it to 20. And we'll increase the number of vertical blocks. We'll set that to 20. Maybe 30. There we go. Just as you can tweak any setting in the effects controls, we can tweak the mosaic effect, even though the mosaic effect only applies to the portion inside, or if inverted is checked, outside the ellipse or the rectangle. Notice that my playhead, however, was not at the beginning of the clip. That was intentional. I want to show you why. See these commands right here. This allows us to build the tracking path that the mask is going to follow. And unlike a lot of motion trackers where you have to set tracking dots on what's moving, this uses something a lot more like Mocha, where it tracks the entire plane, the object, which is below the rectangle or below the ellipse. If you click the wrench icon, it says we're going to track this based upon the position of what's under it, or the position and rotation of what's under it, or the position scale and rotation. Now, the one that I want is, of course, the one that's not there. I would like to track by position and scale. So as somebody walks closer and closer to the camera, the mask will zoom in or zoom back, depending upon what's necessary. Because I just want to have the mask move around in the same position as the face, we don't need to follow these other X, Y, and Z coordinates or rotation. So I'm going to just select position. This right pointing arrow will track the face of the girl as she moves forward from the position of the playhead. I didn't set tracking dots. I didn't say anything special. I just said follow what's underneath and Premiere is following what's underneath. Now it takes a few seconds to have this get uh, 
calculated, and my clip is relatively short, and the speed of your computer will have a dramatic impact on how fast this tracking occurs. But notice that without me having to do anything, that mask has tracked with her. What's even nicer is if I put the playhead back where I started and click the leftward pointing arrow, now it'll track in reverse. So I can set this to, say, the middle of an effect in case the person starts off screen or ends off screen. You can start from the middle and track both ways. Because I'm impatient, I'm going to click stop and just hit the space bar. Look at that. Instant felon tracking. <laughs> That could not be easier. And what's really cool is this can be applied to any effect that can be applied to a single clip. Now, let's say that I wanted to have text move along with her running. That would require moving this over to After Effects. The mask and tracking feature is only for effects applied to a single clip. If you need to have a second clip, like text, move in conjunction with the girl running, then you need to do the tracking inside After Effects. This effect does not do that. Well, let's see what else we've got to work with. Let's go back to the project panel. Oh, by the way, and again, to delete a mask that you don't like, highlight the name, hit the delete key, the mask is gone, and now everything is back to the mosaic effect. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at new features inside Premiere Pro and Audition, both the Creative Cloud 2014 release. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz slash store. Membership is a great value, especially if you need to stretch your training dollars. A membership in our video training library saves you money. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 700 movies, hundreds of hours of training, all in depth and all up to date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions.